Hey, today it's Prezzo. Thanks for stopping by. Now this is episode four of building a float lock vise for your drill press table. Now, if you don't know what a float lock vise is, it's a clamping system that goes on your drill press and it will allow you to hold flat, round, square, rectangular work very securely and it's easily adjustable. Now, in the previous three episodes, I was working on some aluminium castings that are on the bench here and I made steel jaws in the previous episode. And in today's video, we're going to finish off one of these jaws and we'll get to work on the steel bar that is an essential part of the clamping system. Now, there is a playlist. It's up above there now. You can go back and check out the previous three episodes if you missed them. So let's have a closer look at the bench and we'll see what we're doing today. This is the part that I was working on in the previous episode and we've got all these V's cut in here so you can grip round work very easily. And we cut this slot in the top of the jaw for holding flat work and I held this particular feature over till this video and what we need to do here is to face that uh, projection off there from the rough casting, drill that and tap a thread in it. And this is the uh, part of the clamp that allows you to quickly reposition this particular jaw. So on the 3D printed mock-up here you can see that there's a pin in there and that pin projects through into the bore of the clamp body itself and that pin engages in this slot in this steel bar here and there will be a series of part drilled holes in the bottom of that slot there that allow that pin to actually grip into each of those positions. Now this is only a mock-up of the bar, the, the one that I'm working on today will be much longer than that but what we need to do is get this set up in the milling machine and we need to arrange it so that projected boss there is standing vertically and I've worked out a way of doing that but we need a mandrel I'm going to use this one here. This is uh, used previously for clamping together both the jaws so I can machine these surfaces to get them dead flat. Now that's a steel part and I'm going to press that all the way into the jaw there and I'll lock it in place with some Loctite and then we can grip it by this projection here. So I'll get that ready and then we'll go to the mill and we'll do all the work on this part and then we'll get started on the steel bar. I'm just going to clean this uh, with some IPA that's isopropyl alcohol, not India Pale Ale. <laughs> I do like an IPA though. And we're going to use a very small amount of uh, Loctite just to grip these two parts together. And we can break that Loctite bond later on with some heat. But it will hold it nice and securely. So just a very small amount, it's actually not Loctite, it's a cyber bond, but it's the same thing. Okay, so we're going to let that cure and then going to hold this in a collet block in the milling machine vise. So we can tilt the collet block over at 45 degrees and actually go that way. And that will put this surface here uh, horizontal and that projection there will be vertical. So this is a setup that I've come up with. So I've got a square collet block in the vise here and a 20mm ER collet in the chuck. And I can set the whole square collet block at 45 degrees in the vise. So we'll just loosen that off and just make sure that that's seated correctly. Now the mandrel that I put in there with Loctite is now set and we can put that in the collet. And then the next job we need to align this face or the back face of that jaw exactly with the x-axis of the milling machine. So I've got an indicator set up there. I'll get that done. But what that does is it puts this projection here vertical and then we just have to get the spindle over the center of that projection. Okay, I think I've got that pretty good, so I'm going to lock off this collet chuck and then what we're going to do is we're going to center find on the square collet block itself, the, the body of the square collet block in the vise. And that will put me exactly over the center of this 20mm bore here. And then 
we should also be able to find exactly the centre in the same plane on this projection here. OK, well let's put me over the centre of the two jaws here in the Y axis and therefore over the centre of the square collet block and therefore over the centre of the 20mm bore at the back here. So now we're going to get in position over this sort of cast projection here. What I have in this collet here is a piece of aluminium that I've turned up in the lathe. It's 16mm OD. This cast projection here is also roughly 16 so I'm using this to get my position in X. So we're already set in Y and I'm just feeling that and you can sort of move the part along in X and when you feel that that's more or less aligned we'll lock the table in X there. Now it's not quite right in Y. I can feel there's a slight difference in the two sides there. So I'm going to go through that whole process again off camera and I'll double check my work. But if it turns out that it's correct and it's not exactly in the centre of that cast feature, it's not a big deal. Cosmetically it doesn't look good. But it's more important that we're exactly in the centre of the plane passing through this 20mm ball. And not so much that we're exactly in the centre of that cast feature. Alright, well I checked that again and not much changed. I must have been really close the first time, but it's worth checking. So we'll go ahead now, we're going to drill this, it needs to be drilled and finished with a reamer at 6mm and then we're going to put a 10mm metric thread on the top of that. Alright, I just stopped. I can feel something moving. So again, I don't know. Let me check a few things. Alright, one of those socket head screws was loose. <laughs> uh, yeah, that could have been a disaster. Well, I had to stop and start all over again. It turns out that this material, this cyber bond, should actually be called pathetic bond because it didn't bond at all. And the part, I could feel it moving and I thought it was the socket head screws, but it wasn't. And when I checked it, you could actually rotate it. So good thing I didn't go too far. I've taken everything out, cleaned everything, set it all up again. I've checked my hole position. I think we're good. So I'll keep going, but that's why I was holding that. I was trying to feel if there was any movement there and I could feel it. So it wasn't worth continuing. And as usual, when things go wrong, uh, more than one thing goes wrong at the same time. So I'll show you what else has failed. So a while ago, I upgraded the light ring on the milling machine here. And I bought one of these. This is a COB style light ring chip on board. And these are used on cars. This one's 12 volts DC. And they're super, super bright. And they've got a rigid aluminium ring on the back there. So I made an adapter that goes underneath the quill here and this is made of some thicker 6mm aluminium and it acts as a heat sink as well because these do get quite hot. And uh, to control it I bought one of these. Now these are sold as a controller for LED light strips and when I checked uh, they say they're okay for the uh, like SMD, uh, that's surface mounted device type LEDs. And I don't know why it makes a difference if we're using it with COB LEDs. But it turns out that the controller that I've got in this 3D printed housing here has failed. So I bought three of these and this is the last one I got left. The other two have failed. And it's getting quite hot. And when you press on that middle button it should actually turn the light off. But it doesn't. It just stays on and it's getting really hot. So uh, that one's failed. Um, I'm going to have to rethink that. I made a big deal about this on Instagram and I showed all of the parts that I made. So if anybody bought one of these on my recommendation, I'm terribly sorry. Turns out they're junk.
All right, well that part's pretty much done. I do need to just break that sharp edge with the file. Uh, we'll get some heat on the mandrel, get that out of there, and then we can move on and make the, the clamping bar itself. Got all that cleaned out now and I ran a bottom tap all the way to the bottom of that drilled hole that we've done. And this is some 6mm ground stainless steel rod. It will go into the reamed hole that we just put in there. And you should be able to see the pin coming through in that 20mm bore there. Now if we've done everything right, this should slide onto the mock-up of the clamping bar. And then the rod should go through and it should lock into the slot in the bar and it should also find one of those holes and lock itself in place which is there so that's all good so this shouldn't rotate now or at least not rotate very much and what we need to do next uh, is to get on and make the, the actual bar itself this is the material that i'll be using here it's just 20 millimeter low carbon steel uh, cold rod steel and we also need to later on make a proper pin to go in here this will have a spring on the back of it and a nut and the idea is you can pull that pin out and disengage it and then you can slide the jewel quickly but when you want it to lock you just let go of it and it should snap into one of the pre-drilled holes in the slot anyway let's go and get on with this okay mail's just arrived and got some new stickers now these have come from chuck bomberito and chuck has a channel called outside screwball and chuck's been helping me with the build of this float lock vice so he owns one, he sent me some photos of some details that I didn't have, and that was a huge help. So uh, I urge you to check out his channel. He does some really interesting stuff, and he's got a really nice home workshop with some very, very, very cool tools. And he's also got some really cool stickers, as you'll see in a minute. Now he lives in California in the United States, and I was going to send him one of my stickers. It turns out he already had one, even though I hadn't sent it to him. I think he got it from Dean at the Air K shop. Uh, and that was a shame because I wanted to send him some Vegemite. <laughs> now, this is going to be a thing, right? If you live anywhere outside Australia and you want to trade stickers, I'll send you a sticker, but I'll also send you some Vegemite and I'm going to get you to try it. But uh, I'll, I'll probably work something out with uh, Chuck at a later date. Anyway, let's get these stickers up on the door. Now, Chuck actually sent me three stickers. Uh, I'm going to put this one up first. I love this one here. It looks like one of those old fashioned uh, machine tags. Uh, beautifully made, beautifully designed, and it's got that lovely weathered look, so we'll get that one up. But he also sent me this one, and also this one, which is uh, really interesting. <laughs> uh, I've never been able to work out what uh, ergomania or endectic, endictic, endictic. Wait a minute, I'm going to Google this. Okay, Google says that the word endictic, and that's how you pronounce it, means to show or exhibit so i'm guessing that's what chuck does in his uh, youtube channel and the other word uh, which is here is uh, ergomania and that means an excessive desire to work or exercise <laughs> anyway let's get these up on the door So I've got to fit. All right. And there they are. Thanks, Chuck. Now, I've got the work set up in the forge jaw here, and I've got this dialed into fairly close tolerance. All of the turning work is done on this one end of this bar, so it's really just got a thread and a hole drilled in it for a compression spring. The other end is just faced and chamfered.
Okay, I need to cut a metric coarse thread on here at 12 millimeters diameter, so M12 by 1.75. And you're probably saying, just single point it, Mark. Come on, be a man. Uh, but there's a problem. So a metric coarse thread in 12 millimeter diameter has a pitch of 1.75 millimeters, right? And on the Colchester that I own, it will cut both metric and imperial threads. That's what this lever here does. You can change it over from English to metric. And if you look along the chart here, it goes one millimeter pitch, then it goes 1.25, then 1.5, and then you say, well, the next one would be 1.75, but it's not. <laughs> it jumps down here to two millimeters. So it turns out I cannot cut a 1.75 millimeter pitch on my lathe, so we're just going to have to use a die. I know, it's a cop out. Well, that ended badly. Uh, I bought this cheap die holder from a seller on eBay. It came from India. Seemed like a good idea at the time, uh, but the thread on this handle here is very, very short, and it's surprising how much torque you need to drive an M12 die on a piece of cold rolled steel. So, handle sheared off, uh, the die stuck on there. I'm just going to take this whole thing out of the four jaw chuck. I'll finish it in the bench vise with a regular die holder so I can get some leverage on it. Yeah, okay. don't buy cheap tools. Uh, it's much easier. Well, there's our finished thread, and this hole in the end here is for a compression spring. And this will take the backlash out of the nut later on. Now, this spring's not right, but just give you some idea of how that works. I have uh, cleaned up the other end off camera. And what we need to do now is head over to the mill and we're going to put the pocket in which stops the jaw from rotating and then we'll have a go at the slot and doing the indents with the stop pin. So here's the setup in the mill. I've got an aluminium V-block on the moving jaw. We've pushed up hard against the fixed jaw at the back here. I've run a DTI along the top of the bar and we're within a couple of hundredths of a millimetre over the full length there which is fine. The exact depth of the slot's not that important. Now as well as cutting a 6mm slot all the way along that bar, or most of the way, I've got to mill a pocket in this end of the bar here, and that's why I have this offset from the vise. So I can mill the pocket and then we can check it. So I'll slide the jaw on, and then we can run the drill bit through that hole there, and just check to see that we can slide the jaw, but it should not pivot too far left and right or backwards and forwards. Once all of that's done, we're going to tilt the head of the mill over at 45 degrees. We're going to cut the little pockets in the bottom of the slot. That surface there is about 0.2 millimeters higher than it should be according to the drawing. But I'm going to try the jaw on there now and see if I can get this pin to go through or the draw bit to go through. And then we'll just adjust it, but I'll need to deburr all of this first. All right, this is a 2.8 millimeter drill bit. And that passes all the way through. This one is 2.9. 
and that goes all the way through and there's almost zero rock backwards and forwards with that 2.9 and this is our 3 and it only wants to go halfway so I'm going to take another 0.1 off and uh, hopefully that'll be it Alright, just excuse me for struggling with this, but it's really tight. It sort of moves, um, but it's going to need some dressing, I guess. So I'm going to take about another 0.05 off that, uh, because I think when the roll pin goes in, it will expand very slightly in the bore. And even though I've got the drill bit through there, and it sort of moves, I think it's too tight. So I'll take some more off, and I think we'll be good. Alright, there's a bit of movement there but once again when that roll pin goes in I think it's going to be okay. Alright now I need to go ahead and cut the 6mm slot all the way along this bar here. Now I've got a clamp at this end here sitting on a machinist jack. I don't need to start the groove right from the very end of the bar though. So I'm going to plunge the cutter in, we'll do all the cuts uh, up to the point where the groove stops and then we're going to tilt the head over and do all those little pockets. Getting close there and you've really got to have good situational awareness when you're doing this. There's all sorts of paraphernalia hanging off this head and as you're tilting it you tend to concentrate on the scale and you're not really looking around. So um, I'm going to finish this off camera so I've got to concentrate <laughs> and I'll use one of those digital angle gauges on the spindle here to make sure I've got 45 degrees or close to it. Yeah, scary.
Well, this is the setup that I've got. So I put the cutter, the six millimeter cutter, the same one I used to cut the groove here, in the bottom of the groove. So I just rocked the spindle backs and forwards until I could feel it was touching. And at that point, I've set my DRO to plus three. And I've also set a dowel pin up here. So let me show you. So I've got a dowel pin in here, and when I remove that, I'll be able to move the spindle down another three millimeters measured along the 45 degree axis. So all our pockets are going to be three millimeters deep measured along that 45 degree axis and at five millimeters intervals in X. So I'm going to go ahead and do that. I'll do the first one, and then we just step and repeat. I'm going to run into trouble with the clamping system down the other end later on, but we'll worry about that when we get to it. So sort of really hard to show you, I can't get the camera in close enough, but it sort of looks right, spacing looks right, depth looks right. So I'm just going to keep doing that, and I'm just using the DRO to offset five millimeters each time, and we'll see if we can get to the end without breaking an end mill. <laughs> Well, I just put the last of the pockets in there now. There's a total of 45 from where I started. And this last section of the bar here is where the clamping arrangement will be in the back of the drill press table. So there's no point in putting any pockets in there. And I did have to shift the clamp um, because I was going to hit the quill uh, with the clamp where it was. So take this out now, get a deburred and see if the mechanism works. Yay. Uh, you can see there I've deburred all of that now. I've got this jaw sliding freely along there and uh, what I'll do is put this in the vise. I'll show you some parts I made off camera and we'll try out this mechanism that should allow it to ratchet along the bar. So here are a couple of parts I made off camera because these are just very straightforward turning operations. So this is made of a what we call silver steel. This can be hardened and I will harden just the very end of that pin there. That's what engages in the pockets in the slot. The rest of it can stay soft and this is just a brass nut that keeps all of that in place. So when we assemble it, the 6mm pin goes down into that bore there. There is a spring that keeps that engaged and then this brass nut goes on and that keeps it all from popping out of there. Now later on I'll thread this all the way in and we'll probably put some uh, thread lock on that once we've got it all sorted. And later on there will be a, an aluminium knob on this part here. So in operation what happens is you can pull on the, what will be the knob and that will slide along the bar like that. And then when you drop the pin in and push it will lock and then when you slide it along quickly it just ratchets. So it just does that and then locks. So that part of it is working really well. And we can sort of tune that as we go. The only thing I'm not happy about is the alignment of these two jaws. Now it's not right. Uh, if I put a rule on there you can see that it's crooked. don't know if you can see actually. Put on that side. But it's not right. Now I'm not sure what's gone wrong there. I haven't put the roll pin in this jaw here yet and uh, when I do that I'll, I'll need to check it again. I think I can fix it but it's just a bit annoying. It should have been right. But it does actually lock and we can grip stuff with it. So here's a piece of aluminium stock there and what we'll do is just slide that up. Whoops. Slide that up, lock it, and then when we tighten the nut, it does actually grip. 
so quite secure so really happy with that now in the next episode I'm going to work on the nut and the handle for this jaw here so the proper nut we're going to make is made of steel it will fit inside this jaw here and then this roll pin will do its job and keep that uh, nut engaged and then we can move the jaw in and out just by turning the nut one way or the other now, there is a swivel handle that goes on that as well so we'll do all of that in the next episode and uh, we may even get a chance to make a start on the clampy bit that goes down the end here so there is a locking mechanism that keeps this uh, clamp down to the top of the drill press table so once you've moved the float lock vise where you want it to go clamp it and it should stay there so we'll see how we go uh, but for now i think we're we're getting pretty close to being done on this job here and it's sort of working out although you know got some issues <laughs> anyway Prezzo signing out for now. I'll see you next time. Cheers.